Okay, so we're gonna do yet another projectile motion problem. This one is probably going to be a much more difficult one. Because normally, up to this point, I've asked you for things like how far away something is. So normally, you're looking for the delta x. That's not what we're going to do this time. We're going to make it a lot more difficult. I'm going to tell you that I've I end up, what am I doing? I'm throwing a ball at a, no, that's the wrong number. I'm throwing a ball at some velocity, v naught, at 45 degrees above the horizontal. And it ends up going 20 meters away. That's that 20 I was trying to draw. And it ends up landing over here. Okay, and this is near the surface of the earth. This is flat, level ground. Now, what I want you to tell me is how fast I threw it. This one's a lot tougher than what we normally deal with, but it's still solvable. Okay, well, how we normally deal with a projectile motion problem is we take a look at the motion in the Y and the motion in the x individually. So let's set up our delta x. This time we know this. This one's 20 meters. Okay. Our final velocity in the x, we don't know that one. Our initial velocity in the x, don't know that. That's part of what we're looking for, but we may know something about it. We'll take a look at it here in just a moment. Our time, like usual, which is going to be our bridge over to the y direction. And our acceleration in the x, well, that one's going to be 0 meters per second squared, like usual. Let's see what we've got in the y. Well, our total displacement is, uh, it's coming back down to the ground, so we end up with 0 meters displacement. Comes back, it starts at 0, ends at 0, so we're good. Our final velocity in the y, don't know that. Initial velocity in the y, not certain about that, but maybe we can learn something about it. If we can find it and our initial velocity in the x, we should be able to find our answer, right? All right, so time, don't know, but that's our bridge between the two. And our acceleration in the y, like usual, since we're near the surface of the Earth, is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. This one's a toughie. Okay. Well, we do know something. We've got this angle that we haven't used yet. So, what I've normally done up to this point is I've drawn out my vector. This is 45 degrees. And normally I have that velocity, but instead that's what I'm looking for. But if I had that velocity, I do know that my initial velocity in the x will be so uh, toa. Take a look at the other videos if you are still uncertain about splitting this up. For our x, we're going to be dealing with the adjacent because it's right next to our angle, and we will find that v naught x equals v naught, whatever that is, normally I could put in a number, but for now we're just going to leave it as v naught, times cosine of 45 degrees. That doesn't help me a whole lot. I can evaluate cosine of 45 degrees and find out this is equal to 0 0.707 v naught. All right, I'll stick with that because it's useful for now. I do the same thing for v naught in the y. I'm going to find that it's v naught sine 45 degrees. And it will also evaluate to 0 0.707 v naught. Okay. That's not a lot, but it's more than we used to have. Now, instead of having two different variables, I don't know, v naught in the x, v naught in the y, I've gotten them isolated down to one variable I don't know, which is my initial velocity. And that's actually what I want to solve for, so that's not a bad switch out. So, I'm going to write that this is 0 0.707 v naught. I will attempt to erase that. And then over here I'll erase that. And this guy is also 0 0.707 v naught. Okay. It's still painful because I don't have that number. But, but, over here, I have my displacement, I have my acceleration, and I have something that I can work with as my initial velocity. Well, normally we go for our time. Let's take a look at that. 
We're just going to keep going on this, keep on trucking, and see what we get. So, like normal, we don't care about our final velocity. We don't have it, don't care. So we're going to use our second equation on our kinematic sheet. Okay, so we end up with delta y equals our initial velocity in the y times time plus one half a in the y t squared. Okay, well, I can quickly plug in some numbers. I know that my displacement is zero, which is good because otherwise we'd end up with a quadratic and that would just make this even worse. Our v naught in the y is 0 0.707 v naught. I'm going to multiply that by t plus one half negative 9.81 meters per second squared t squared. I'm going to start off by dividing both sides by t. That gets rid of that, and one of the t's over there, so it gets rid of the squared. I'm going to divide 0 by t. Luckily, 0 divided by just a regular number is still 0. So, I end up with 0 equals 0 0.707 v naught, the thing I'm looking for plus one-half negative 9.81 meters per second squared times t. Okay, well, I can evaluate this out. I'll end up with 0 equals 0 0.707 v naught plus one-half times that. Actually, that'll change that plus to a minus, and that's what, 4.905 meters per second squared times time. I'm going to add this over to this side. As long as I do the same thing to both sides, I'm not changing my equation. The minus and the plus cancel each other out, and I end up with 4.905 meters per second squared times time equals 0 0.707, my unknown velocity. We're getting closer, I can feel it. So I divide both sides by 4.905 meters per second squared. Okay, and now I have a value, so to speak, for my time. It is 0 0.707 times some initial velocity, the thing that I want, getting close, divided by 4.905 meters per second squared. It's not an actual value of time, but it's, it's something. Let's go with it. So time equals, what did I just write? Do I have it on here? Um, I'm certain I do, but I want to make certain that I've got it listed right. Okay, yeah. It is time is equal to 0 0.707 v naught divided by 4.905 meters per second squared. That's the same thing over here. All right, I don't know my final velocity, don't care, in the x direction, so we're going to use our second equation again. Delta x equals our initial velocity in the x times time plus 1 half a in the x times t squared. First thing I'm going to do is I know a in the x is going to be 0, so I'm going to get use that to get rid of this whole term. It'll simplify things down, and at this point I'm certain I could use things to be simple. My initial velocity in the x, it is 0 0.707 v naught. That's my initial velocity in the x. I'm going to take that and I'm going to multiply it by my time, which was a messy, unpleasant it is 0 0.707 v naught looks familiar divided by 4.905 meters per second squared all right okay i know that my delta x because i found i know it this time is 20 meters so let me replace that i'm so used to looking for delta x that i just put that in without thinking hey i can put numbers in it Okay, well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 4.905 meters per second squared to get rid of that. 4.905 meters per second squared. Okay, so I'm going to multiply that by 20. What is that? 4.905 times 20 equals 98.1 
meters per second squared times meter is meter squared per second squared equals 0 0.707 times the same thing. So 0 0.707 squared equals 0 0.4. 499, it basically comes up to 0 0.50. Cool. And then V naught times V naught is V naught squared. Oh, we've got an equation here. We've got what I'm looking for. And it's the only thing we don't know, so we can solve for it. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.50. 0 0.50. OK. So I'm going to take 98.1 divided by 0 0.50. It's 196.3, roughly, meters squared per second squared equals v naught squared. Hey. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That gives me 14.0 meters per second, because meters squared per second squared, and I take the square root, they both go down to not squared anymore, so meter per second which is great, because that means it's a velocity. I totally just found the velocity that I threw the ball at. So, sometimes problems get a lot messier. Normally, we're looking for the range, but if I give you the range, we can backtrack and find other information. 